the next nine minutes before we have a special prayer by our youth pastor is going to be very special. One of the strongest secrets of a very solid and a consecrated Christian experience is the Word of God and the spirit of prophecy. I have put about, if I'm not mistaken, 13 or 14 spirit of prophecy quotations and each slide will remind, depending on the length, I want all of you to just read it silently in your mind. Please read it for the next few minutes, after which I will call uh, Ma'am Jaisal to offer a special prayer for us. Here we go. Father, bless us as we listen to the spirit of prophecy, and may you speak to us, especially for the single youth. In Jesus' name, amen. These are very powerful friends, and I would want all of you to take hold, take advantage of the spirit of prophecy. Let's read it very silently.
I would like to share all these powerful quotations. I would like to call a special, special call for all the women here, the ladies, the girls. Will you please stand up? We're going to have a special prayer of consecration by the youth pastor of this church. My young friends, all the girls, ladies, women, whether you're married or not married, whether you're young or old, please stand as we call upon Ma'am Jezel, who will dedicate and consecrate all the women of this church. Thank you, Ma'am Jezel. Let us bow our heads for a prayer. Our Almighty God in heaven, our Father who called us daughters, we are so privileged to call you our Father. We thank you, dear Lord, and we praise you for you own us and you love us so much. And that, Lord, we could find our completeness only when we are one in you. I praise you, dear Lord, for these women here who attended this afternoon. We have heard your words. We have heard your counsels to us. Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we could be able to do your will, so that we could make the right decisions, so that, Father, our lives will be a living sacrifice for your glory alone. And that, Father, with these women who are still looking for their lifetime partner, I pray, dear Lord, that you would help them in their decisions. And that, Father, the man that they will be their partners will only come from you, will be the man you send to them the man that is best for them as they have a desire in their heart to serve you in their whole life. And so I pray, dear Lord, that you will provide as you have done to Isaac, as you have done to the people in the Bible time, that you are the one to provide for the lifetime partner of these young ladies of yours. Lord, I also pray for those women who are married already. Lord, I pray that you would bless our marriage, that, Father, you would be continually the center of our marriage and in the midst of our relationships. I pray, dear Lord, that in every struggles, in every trials that comes our way, you will be our strong tower and our strong support and our ultimate strength. And Father, right now, by your grace and mercy, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I consecrate every woman here to be put in your hands. And that, Lord, as we are in your hands, we are secure. We have the confidence that we will never be away from you and that your guidance is always with us. For we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ma'am Chisel. Appreciate that. We have now entered our last phase of our prayer session. So I'd want all of you to listen. The next 12 minutes is going to be dedicated to young people as you make a decision. I would like to bring to your kind notice have you ever been to this place? The husband's store. Husbands available. Tall husband, short husband, slim one, medium, large, extra large, whatever it is. So this one has six floors, but there is only one rule. 
You can climb one floor after the other, but you cannot come down to the previous floor. Let's look at all the six floors. The first floor, when you climb this husband's store, on the first floor are available men who have jobs and they love the Lord. How many of you will be happy to just stop on this first floor? But there were some women who were not happy staying at the first floor and they went to the second floor. Let's go to the second floor of the husband's store. These men have jobs, they love the Lord, and they love kids. Wow, this is even more interesting. But some women were not happy with this. They said, we are going to go to floor number three. Welcome to third floor husband's store. These men have jobs. They love the Lord. They love kids. But the best thing is that they're extremely good looking. Ladies, shall we stop here? Or you want to go one more floor up? More? That is called covetousness. Okay. Welcome to floor number four. These men have jobs. They love the Lord. They love the kids. They are they're drop dead. But the best thing is that they help with all the housework only on floor number four. Ironing, yes. Washing machine, no need. They will wash. Kitchen, whatever it is. They give you a massage and a spa, no cost. They will also carry your load. Shall we stop here or you want to go one more floor? You want more? I want to pray for you after this meeting, you know. <laughs> Welcome to floor number five. These men have jobs. They love the Lord. They love the kids. And they, they drop dread. They look gorgeous. Housework. But the best thing is that they have strong biceps. Triceps. Are you happy on floor number five? Or you still want to go up? You want to go one more? Okay, let's go to the sixth floor. You are visitor 4,363,012. There are no men on this floor. Please exit. What is the moral of this husband's store? Can you tell me what is the moral? Can you tell me? We're going to pray for all the men right now. What is the moral? You go from floor one floor two, floor three, you kept on going, thinking there will be. Unfortunately, this floor exists just to exit. What is in one word? What was the only word the men, the women kept going up and up? There's only one word. What is that? Can you be louder? Very... Do you have a choir? Very good. Together. Expectations. I want to tell you something, and we're going to pray right now. Why did the women not stop on the first floor? They wanted more. They expected more. And as a very simple pastor of the Adventist Church, I can tell you, you can talk to some women. They have a list that will run down. They will never find a man until the millennium. I can promise that. The expectation is so big. What about you, men? There are some men who, who put a long list, and I will tell you, they will never find until they go to New Jerusalem. By the way, you will not be married in heaven. You know that. What is the reason? Expecting more. The more you expect, the more you will be disappointed. Husband's store teaches us one simple lesson. 
Number one, don't raise your expectation level high. Number two, don't try to change the person that you're dating or you're courting. Don't change your husband or your wife. You cannot change your husband or your wife. Amen? Only the Holy Spirit can change. If you try to change your boyfriend while you are here in AUP, I can tell you, might as well you register for your PhD, you will still finish three PhDs and still not change. It is difficult. You know what is the best lesson? You must say, I want to change. I must be the one to change. So let us all stand up right now. We're going to have a beautiful prayer for us. Lord, I want to change. I know I have so many weaknesses, but I've been trying to expect so much from my fiancé or my friend or from my beloved, or from my husband, or from my wife. I have been trying to be selfish, and at times I wanted my wife or husband or my fiancé to be conformed to my likeness. I wanted him or her to resonate with me, that selfishness. While we will not change to the liking of our beloved, we want the beloved to change according to us. Tell God, Lord, I don't want to keep climbing floors. I want to stay here on the ground floor. I'm not going to climb six floors looking for husband or wife. I'm going to stay here, and I want God to give me the best person that he intends for me. Will you please pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit? Will you please pray that God will create in you a clean heart? He will create in me a clean heart. Lord, I don't want to change because it's all futile. I can never change my partner. I can never change my husband or wife. Lord, it takes the Spirit of God to change. So if there is something in me which is so wicked, which is so selfish, which is so, so unchristlike, Lord, I want you to change. The next two minutes is going to be a prayer for change. Lord, change my heart, O oh God. Change my attitude. Change my worldview. Change my perspective. Change my whole being, and I want not to be modified. I want to be transformed. Will you, play, will you please pray this prayer in Jesus' name to change me, that is myself, two minutes for transformation.
you may be seated, please. We're going to look at the word for the next six minutes before we have the final consecration by Brother Ronald. We're going to pray that God will lead you in choosing a mate. My friends, I want you to look at the timeless principles, beautiful, eternal principles. We want you to know that God loves you. The church loves you. We from the church need every one of you, young people. We're going to look at 10 important principles. I will tell you why. The devil loves you more than anyone else in your own family. The reason why he loves you is he wants to destroy you. So, let's look at this. Choosing a maid as you prayerfully do it, it has to be done God's way and not my way. I want to put this as an opening statement. The person you choose, listen to this, to date or to engage in a courtship or to marry is a direct reflection of your spiritual life. If you show your boyfriend or girlfriend and you bring them to the pastor, and I know what kind of a person he or she is, it reflects your real sincere state of spirituality. Number two, let's look at this. This is even very interesting. This is one of the most famous marriage counselor. His name is Henry Wright. I'm sure most of you have known. He has been in here for 45 years. He says, the person who you choose to marry is a direct reflection of your life. One out of four marriages failed 40 years ago, but now most of every marriage fails because of choosing your mate before choosing your maker. Do you know why did we call you here? We are not conducting a marriage seminar. We are not telling you that you should choose. We have come here to help you to choose your maker. If you choose Jesus today, Jesus will choose the best person for you in this world. Amen. But if you choose your own partner and leave Jesus out, I can guarantee you, you will end up in trouble. I can tell you. And they need Jesus to fix their mistake. I will give you one or two illustrations. Let's very quickly go there. Uh, I want to go quickly. I have so much. I want to listen to what Ellen White says. Show me your friends, and I will tell you what kind of a person you are. A spiritual person is attracted to spiritual person, and a non-spiritual person is likely to fall in love with the person outside the church or with the non-spiritual person. Nothing wrong in getting to know people outside the church. Nothing wrong. But when it comes to choosing your life partner, it's going to be dangerous. Let's continue here. I want to go very quickly. We do not have much time. The first principle is pray more than you used to. Let's look at what Ellen White has to say. I love this. If a man and a woman are in the habit of praying twice a day before contemplating marriage, they should pray how many times? Please tell me, friends, how many times? Four times a day when such step is anticipated. I used to get up at four o'clock before I was married. It is very scary to marry someone. You're not sure how your life will turn out to be. We all have insecurity. I had butterflies in my stomach. So I used to talk to God at 4 o'clock from 4 to 6. I used to pray quite a bit, but I doubled. I didn't know that I was supposed to pray four times. I only prayed twice. You are so lucky that you can pray four times. Pray four times. Daniel prayed how many times? How many times did Daniel pray? 
three times. That's why he didn't get married. That's why he was a bachelor. You should pray four times if you want to be married. Let's go here. This is interesting. There are three things you have to do before you get married. How many things? Three. Don't forget this. Number one, the first thing is that you have to pray. Second thing is very important. This is more important than this. What is the second thing? Pray. But the third thing is very, very important. Pray. If you do not pray, you will surely end up marrying the devil's grandmother or someone like that. Let's go to the Bible. I like this. I want to give you five principles quickly. Yes. Spend time knowing yourself in the Lord before knowing someone else. I want to tell you, my friends, I wish when we were small, somebody called us for a meeting like this and taught us. Do you know why do we have this special prayer meeting? Today's meeting will save many of your lives. Amen? God will save you. As a pastor, I've always been burdened about young people. I know how, how much of heartaches you will go through if only you marry someone who is unequally yoked. I want you to pray for me. I will be speaking about being unequally yoked in the PYC during divine service. My sermon topic is entitled, A Camel and a Cow. Can a camel marry a cow? Yes or no? Come to PYC, you will know. You have to spend more time in God's presence that you will discover and explore yourself more before you know someone else. Most of us think that we know who we are. No. Some of us don't know that we don't know anything. Some of us know that we don't know. But the worst thing is that you don't know anything and you don't know that you don't know nothing. Pray to God that God will give you a revelation of who you are. How can you get to know someone when you do not know who you are? Let's go to the third one. Ron is getting ready to consecrate. Ask yourself if she or he is going to help me heavenward or if he is going to, she is going to lift you spiritually or not. If you're dating someone and if that person has enhanced your spiritual walk with God, you need to really walk closer with God and you can get to know that person. But if by knowing that person, you have stopped your Bible study, you've stopped your midweek, you've stopped coming to church, and you're more worldly, I want to tell you, before the sun goes down today, please end your relationship with that person. In Jesus' name, it is better for you to suffer a heartbreak for three months momentarily than to suffer for the rest of your life permanently. I will be happy to pray with you every week for the next three months if you're suffering heartbreak than to pray with you until second coming. No. Please, prayer is good, but prayer should not be prayed for the things that you have not prayed for. Let's go to the Bible. Next one, two more points. What is that person bringing in your life? Man, it's a business. If I don't get anything from you, I don't want to transact with you. Why have I come here? I want young people to give your lives to Jesus. That's why I came. I will do anything to you if you say, I will give my life to Jesus. Because when Jesus comes as a pastor, when he asks me, what did you do for me? I want to tell him, Lord, I wanted the Holy Spirit to use me to bring. Or look at this. Other than degree, beauty, spiritual aspect. I want to talk just one example from India. In India, we have dowry system. Have you heard about dowry? I think in Philippines, you don't have dowry. 
I am very happy and I'm very excited. In India, if you are a girl, you have to pay a huge sum of money to the boy. It's only then the boy will marry you. Do you know that? For example, I see Mr. Mr. Pasamba, Winwin Pasamba. If he comes to India, there will be many who will give him one million, two million. They will give him a brand new car. They will give him a house. They will give him an Alsatian dog. They will also give him whatever he asks. It comes with a lot of money. But you know what is the problem with that? You don't marry the person. You marry money. I would be happy to marry someone whom I love and not have money than to marry money and live with hell with someone. Let's go to the last one. I love this. This is something very interesting. Look at this. Uh, we do not have time for this. Let me go. Uh, very fifth one. Oh. Don't drop your standards just for the sake of having someone in your life. We're going to enter into consecration. Let's read one sentence here. You know what is 2 Corinthians 6, 14? Can right and wrong be partners? Light have anything with darkness? Can Christ agree with devil? Can a believer share with unbeliever? Get away from unbelievers. Separate from them. Have nothing to do, anything unclean then I will welcome you. I want to say a special prayer for those of you who are dating unbelievers. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not, ask, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. If you know that you are dating an unbeliever, if you know that you have been drifting away from God, I want to pray for you right now. I would like to ask for someone here. Is there an ordained minister here who is in the congregation? Will you please raise your hand? Is there an ordained minister? Is there an ordained minister in the congregation who I can see? Okay. Is there an ordained minister? Okay. Is there an ordained elder of the church here? Are you an elder? Please come, sir. I want you to come. Uh, is your wife here? Please, I want both of you to come. I'm going to ask this elder, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to specially pray for young people who have given place to the devil. I know I'm hurting you. I know you may be a little bit emotionally troubled. I love you. I will never harm you or damage you. I'm an ordained minister of the Adventist Church. I would rather see you suffer for three months comparatively, undergo this momentary grief than for you to enter the devil's ground. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. Can you specially say a prayer for the young people who are struggling by dating unbelievers? I pray that God will deal with them right now and give them the strength to take the right decision. Thank you, Elder. Pray for us. Pray for us. Okay, let's pray. Almost gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this uh, wonderful day, Sabbath, you grant to us, and this opportunity to hear all the message from your servant. And we pray, dear Lord, that especially for these young people who have having date with someone who are not Seventh-day Adventists. Yes. yes, so Lord, we pray for them that they able to endure the things that uh, Satan used give to them that able to cut them out from this church. And we pray the O oh Lord that they able to trust you O oh Lord and able to have a courtship with other, or especially with 
same believing persons. Yes, so Lord, these young people have very emotionally uh, touched with this word, especially with the beauties of this word. But we pray the O oh Lord that they will see the hearts of the young people inside this church so that we're able to have date with each other and able to be a good couples in this church. Yes, so Lord, uh, thank you for this uh, prayer request from you that these uh, young people will be be strong with their faith and not able to let be more friends to other uh, friends outside this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to have exactly eight minutes break. If you'd like to use the restroom or drink some water, eight minutes break. Exactly after eight minutes, we will gather here for the final 30 minutes. After that, we will end. Would you please just go outside, get some fresh air, and Brother Ronald will be the one who will lead us in the consecration service of Closer. God bless you. Please do not go because we're going to have a special consecration service for you, and you will be blessed. God bless.